Rivian Automotive is on track to become an electric vehicle giant. The automaker that went public in 2021 raised eyebrows from all sorts of investors with its egregious $100 billion valuation has now come back to ground and is showing and delivering on real results. Not only is Rivian one of the only EV automakers in North America to have successfully ramped up production to multi-billion dollar levels, but it also happens to be the only one making its own electric charging stations and the only one working with the biggest e-commerce company on planet Earth by the name of Amazon. And with the company having just tripled its production and delivery targets for 2023, there is a very high likelihood that Rivian could be number two in line to Tesla as one of the best and most successful electric vehicle manufacturers in North America. So why exactly do I believe that? And what are the factors that will allow Rivian to achieve profitability sooner than many people expect? Well, those questions are exactly what I'm going to address in this video. And well, what better way to start, folks, than addressing the news that has sent the shares of Rivian and media outlets crazy around this company over the past few days. And that happens to be Rivian's first new shipments to Germany and the EU of its Amazon electric delivery vans. As someone who follows high-performance, luxurious, and lavish electric vehicles the most, delivery vans are really the last thing that come to mind. But from an economics, practicality, and economic sustainability perspective, delivery vans are some of the best places for electrification today. And over the past few years, Rivian has built an ecosystem and a significant moat in this market through its multi-billion dollar partnership with Amazon and Prime. When production initially started of the vehicle in late 2021, right around when Rivian went IPO, Amazon took delivery of around 3,000 of these units over the next 12 months. Although that missed the Rivian target of 10,000 units by 2022, it was still a very impressive feat for a company going through a recession and high interest rates, especially for a startup. And that right there, folks, leads us perfectly into the number one reason for why Rivian is on track to be a very successful automaker, which is the fact it's not facing a delivery problem, instead it is facing a production problem. You see, most EV startups fail because there is simply a lack of demand for their product. Most EV startups are simply not even able to get their product into the hand of customers after converting it from a prototype to a minimum viable product. Rivian, on the other hand, has spent the past 10 years developing and refining the same product that it intended to launch back in 2012 and has created a multi-billion dollar facility in normal Illinois to be able to successfully ramp up production of this vehicle. And not only have they been able to triple that over the last one year, but they've been able to do that while reducing the operating losses on each unit sold. Yes, folks, you heard that right. Rivian is on track to achieve gross profit positive by the end of 2024. Unlike what many people thought over the past couple of years, not every automaker in the EV space is going to go bankrupt apart from Tesla. There's been this very unnecessary concern amongst investors and technology enthusiasts that Rivian, Lucid, and other automakers like Nikola are going to go under simply because they have negative profit margins on every vehicle sold. However, anybody with a brain cell could tell that there's a very simple explanation for why that is the case. And it has all to do with the fact that these automakers are investing rapidly in production ramp. The simple reason for why Rivian's profit margins are negative is because they're currently using their factory to produce units at around 20% capacity, which means they've invested the capital for a factory that can produce, let's say 50,000 to 100,000 units per year, but right now, because of resources and supply chain, they're only producing, let's say, 10,000 units per year. That automatically means the overhead costs of their operations has to be spread out over a thinner amount of vehicles, which means, on paper, every vehicle they sell results in a net loss. However, as basic maths would tell you, no company actually loses vehicles to the sale of a direct transaction. 
There is positive cash flow for Rivian, it's just about the operating expenditures that they have to be concerned about, and that is where the importance of ramping up production and meeting demand comes in. And based on the resources and capital that this company has available, as well as the ongoing execution of its management, there is no other company better equipped to be able to do that than Rivian Automotive. You see, not only has Rivian been able to establish a moat and a competitive advantage for itself in an extremely niche market of electric and pickup SUVs, but it's been able to do that while outcompeting the conventional competition. As you can see in the second quarter of 2023, Rivian delivered around 13,000 units, whereas the nearest competitor in the Ford F-150 Lightning, which has been in production longer than the Rivian R1T, sold just under 7,000. And reception and overall reviews for this vehicle have so far been fantastic, with someone like Car and Driver rating the vehicle a 10 out of 10 and the number one spot for the entire electric vehicle market today. With 0 to 60 time of 3.3 seconds and 835 horsepower in its quad motor configuration, the R1T not only beats other competing all-electric pickup trucks, but it also throws conventional pickup trucks completely out of the window. And although you are paying a slightly higher price tag for all of that, the offerability of the vehicle is still not sacrificed. And guess what? Unlike a lot of traditional OEMs, Rivian operates a direct-to-consumer business model, allowing it to retain more profit per vehicle than any other OEM. And the best part is, all of this is not just talk, it is actual execution. Rivian is actually improving its losses, even though revenues are growing exponentially year over year. You can see that in the first quarter, although revenues stayed quite flat, Rivian's cost of revenues fell by more than 40% to $1.2 billion. Again, the reason for this is pretty simple. That's the fact that they have more overhead per vehicle than ever before because their factory is simply running at a lower capacity factor. And as you can see, cost reductions, layoffs, and optimizations in their manufacturing process has allowed them to obtain a gross margin of only negative 80% from the negative 500% we saw in 2021. And although yes, more progress needs to be made, Rivian's operating and profit margins are also headed completely in the right direction. But that is not even close to the best part about Rivian from an investment standpoint. That happens to be the fact that Rivian currently is sitting on cash and cash equivalents of almost $11 billion, with their current liabilities sitting only around $5 billion which means they can pay off all the debts they owe, not only in the short term, but also in the long term, and still have around $6 billion in liquid cash laying around to fund their operations. And that right there, folks, is an extremely impressive feat, giving Rivian stock a price-to-cash ratio of only 1.56 at a market cap of around $17.5 billion dollars, even after the run-up we have seen over the past week or so. Don't get me wrong, folks, nothing on this channel is financial advice, but when it comes to EV stocks, you cannot get a better financial position than this. This means that Rivian stock is still down 80% from its IPO of $100 billion, yet its business fundamentals are at all-time highs, which in my opinion is certainly creating a very attractive contrarian investment opportunity. So what do you guys think? Is Rivian on track to become one of the biggest electric vehicle automakers on earth? And does it have a chance of not going bankrupt over the next five years? As usual folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.